Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and in this video, I'm going to go through the process of updating the Honey Badger template. Now, this is the second update that I've done to the Honey Badger template, and what I'm trying to do always is document my journey that I'm on for bot trading and auto trading, and part of that process is sometimes updating templates as new features roll out or as things change. And so, in this case, we had done a documentation and it was a really long one before where we did a big overhaul of the honey badger template about three months ago this update to the honey badger won't be as extensive we don't have to overhaul it but we can reduce some of the complicated decisions that we had to use previously and start to streamline things inside of our bots and also we're going to incorporate the new trade ideas action into this honey badger template so before i get started here as a reminder this template and any suggestions here they're not a recommendation or an endorsement for a particular trading strategy of course you do your own homework this is purely for educational purposes this is a concept bot that i like to run inside of my account but of course you do your own homework make your own suggestions you run your own templates that fit your personal trading style. Okay, so here is the Honey Badger template. This is the main template page that I shared that we've updated a number of times. Actually, the notes we do have to go through and update, which I'll do after this video and kind of reset the stage here. But I have shared a couple versions of this. The most recent version that we really documented here was this April 17th version where we added all kinds of new filters and things like that and removed uh, a bunch of ancillary filters, added exit options, which were brand new at that time. So we had a big overhaul of the Honey Badger at that point, but we're gonna go through another overhaul of the Honey Badger. And before we do that, the thing that I, I think about personally with the Honey Badger is this concept here that we talked about when we originally released, or when I originally released this template, which was, I wanna build a template that just didn't care. So a template that didn't obviously look at stock charts, a template that doesn't look at, you know, if a trend line is up or a trend line is down. So a template that is purely based on math and probabilities. And so what we tried to do originally with the Honey Badger template was incorporate that. And I think we got most of the way there with current versions that we had, but the missing piece that we had was that we still had to, or you had to decide what type of strategy you wanted to trade. So for my Honey Badgers that I was running, I was trading basically like a 30, 15 Delta put spread or a 30, 15 Delta call spread and a pretty wide iron condor. And I still had to pick those delta ranges, but now with the introduction of trade ideas, what I can do is I can take um, the concept of the market direction and then let trade ideas find the optimal trade that fits my criteria. So that's what we're gonna do mostly here. Again, the Honey Badger is really a concept bot that's geared around trading purely based on math probabilities, a couple little technicals for direction and going from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone a brand new version I'm gonna call this new Honey Badger, just so we have it. I'll throw it in my paper account for now. That's fine, you can give it some capital allocation, it doesn't matter. And then it's got this one master ticker input that we use throughout the bot. So again, I'll clone this current version so we have this current version here that we can start to modify and work with as we go. So inside of the Honey Badger, you'll notice that it has one Honey Badger scanner with a bunch of inputs. We had to use a lot of these inputs because previously we were filtering for a lot of stuff. So we're filtering for bid-ask spread and we we're filtering for probability profit. That's all kind of wrapped up now in this trade ideas action. So we'll get to that here in a second. We do have some monitors um, that we used for challenge exits and for updating exit options closer to expiration. Again, we can get to those as we start to fill out the rest of it. So first thing I'm gonna do here inside of this particular Honey Badger scanner is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add a new automation. And instead of a monet, uh, updating the existing one, which you can do if you want to, just for sake of clarity and just so we can bounce back and forth here and I can show you the changes at the end, I'm going to actually go in and create a copy of the Honey Badger scanner that's running right now. So I just can go over to add a new automation and then I'm going to create a copy and I'll call this one Honey Badger scanner new. Um, just so I know which one it is, okay? Now inside of this particular scanner right now, what we do is we essentially go through the automation sequence of looking for a bearish opportunity. Um, that's the first thing we check. So we just check, is there a bearish opportunity? Is there a bullish opportunity? And if there's not a bearish opportunity or bullish opportunity, well, ultimately it means that there's just a neutral trading opportunity. So that's the pure like meat and potatoes, I guess you could say of, how the Honey Badger works is that it's just looking for a little bit of technicals using RSI and CCI. 
If the market's super, super overbought, it'll sell a call spread. If the market's super, super oversold, it'll sell a put spread. If it's neither of those, and it's just based on math and technicals there, then it does a wide iron condor. And so that's the concept around the honey badger is that it doesn't care what the market direction is doing. It will do whatever the market is doing. If it's overbought, it'll sell a call spread and kind of fade that move or play the opposing move. Same thing on the put side. So that's really kind of the main uh, different like sections, if you will, inside of the honey badger. Okay. Now what we did previously is we had all of these opportunity filters in here. So we had the rate of return and probability of profit and is the actual opportunity that we're looking for, is it available? And all this was also dictated on us determining what we wanted to do. So in my case, like I was trading 60 days, monthly contracts only, uh, like at least uh, up to 60 days, monthly contracts only. And then you could see the deltas were 30 delta and 10 delta. So I was telling my honey badgers, hey, I want to trade 30 delta, 10 delta. That's exactly what I want. Now that was because I didn't know if you know that 30 delta or 10 delta or 30, 15 was better or 15, five, I don't, I don't know. But that was what I was telling it to do. And I think this is where truthfully, like this is that last piece that was a little bit more subjective to the concept of the honey badger, which is that it doesn't care, it can trade based on math and probabilities. This was that piece which we still had to put in there. So I still had to put into my bot, I wanted to trade the 30 delta, 10 delta. And I put that in and that's that's why I trade, worked out okay, that's fine, but maybe there's some opportunity to optimize. So once I passed those opportunity filters, then I told it to open a very specific type of trade. And again, there's no problem in doing this. You can do this if you want to, but in my case, I think that there's an opportunity to optimize it now with trade ideas because the trade ideas action can find all opportunities and then filter for the best possible opportunity based on my criteria. But again, here previously, I had to put in all the information I wanted. I specifically wanted this. I specifically wanted this, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here's what we're going to do this time. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to strip out some of this stuff inside the honey badger and we're going to basically remove a lot of inputs and strip it down to some core elements. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kill all of these opportunity filters. I really don't need them anymore. I can do this based on an inside the single open trade idea action. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these opportunity filters. That will really reduce the friction and the complexity of the automation down considerably. So now what I have is I have at the bare bones, a very simple automation that's looking for a bullish bearish opportunity. You can see it's looking for some RSI signals and CCI signals. If there's no bearish opportunity. Is there a bullish opportunity? Same thing, RSI and CCI signals. And if neither of those are the case, then it goes down this no path, which means there's a neutral trading opportunity available. Okay. Now in this case, I'm also going to go ahead and delete my open position actions. I don't need my open position actions anymore because that is telling the bot exactly what type of position I want to open. In this case, I want the bot to choose the type of position I want, it, it wants to open based on my criteria and based on math and probability. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these open position actions. And that is going to get us down to a very bare bones, <laughs> basic setup here that we can start to refill back in for our honey badger. Now notice on the left hand side that once I started to delete all of those inputs and all of those, those sections, I can now see that some of these inputs that I previously used are now unused. Now in this case, what I like to do is I like to rebuild everything from scratch. Maybe I might use some of these inputs uh, later for different automations. So I'm not going to delete them yet, but later I'll come back in here and I'll just click this little delete icon. That'll delete the input and kind of streamline the way that the bot runs. But right now you can see that there's a lot of inputs. In this case, there's 13 inputs that it was using. Some are unused right now. We'll see how that goes as we continue on. Okay. Now what I want to do inside of here is I want to fill out the yes path if there is a bearish trading opportunity. So if RSI and CCI are really high based on whatever settings I use, you can change these for your bot version. Then I want to enter a short call spread. So here down the yes path, I'm going to go here and instead of opening a new position and telling the bot exactly what strikes and deltas and whatever I want, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new trade idea. This uses the new technology that references and pulls all the possible combinations for the ticker that I'm looking at. 
and then can do some math and probability filtering and ranking for the best opportunity for that particular ticker and subset of criteria. So that's what I want to do. I want to open a new trade idea. I'm going to do it on one symbol and one strategy because all of our honey badgers are set up for one symbol, this master symbol that we talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and open a short call spread. Now here I can still put in some of the position criteria. The first thing you have to do always is you got to select the, the ticker, ticker symbol. We're not going to just randomly choose it. You shouldn't want to randomly choose it. So here we're going to connect this to our ticker input that we already have and already use. That's the ticker input for the automation. It's also the master ticker input for the bot itself. So that way when you clone this, and I'll show you how to do this at the end of the video, you clone multiple versions. You can just swap the ticker input if you want to and just continue on your path. Now here you can set some expiration parameters if you want to. This is where I personally want to set some expiration parameters in mine. I don't want to give it the ability to do everything under the sun. Um, I want you know some control over how positions are entered for the way that I run Honey Badgers, the way I think about it. If you don't set the uh, expiration parameters here, then it will choose any expiration. So any expiration that, that, again, meets your criteria that we'll set. So in this case, I do want to filter out some of the shorter expirations. So I'll go to something like 20 days and I'll let the max go something up to like 45 days. Okay, so I don't want to do something 90 days. Um, you could do something further out than that if you want to do like 60 days or whatever, but I'll set it to 20 to 45 days. Also in here, you can set your delta range. Again, this can give you a min and a max range for your short call or your long call. This is if you really want to hone in on it. In my case, I don't really care uh, what the delta range is because I think most of that is going to be determined by the probability of success target that I want it to filter for. And so that will help kind of craft what deltas, but I don't really care if it's a exactly 30 or 25 or 15 or whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever works best for my position. In this case also, we can set a position size here. You can create a new input for this if you want to, to set a position size. I'll just leave this as one contract. Um, that way I know I'm, my position size is super small. And then for the price of any uh, short call spread that gets entered, what I can do here is I can set up to a minimum slippage. So I'll give it about four cents of slippage from the mid price, which means that when it's starting to send the orders to the broker, I'm comfortable doing about four cents of slippage. That will also control really wide spreads. It'll start in the middle and only go four cents out from there. So if it does happen to be a little bit wider spread at the time that it finds a trade and it tries to enter a trade, it's not going to go crazy from the mid price. The more slippage you give it, the higher likely chance is that you get the trade filled, but then you get a little bit of slippage. So find that sweet spot for you. For me, it's somewhere around four or five cents um, on a particular position. Last thing that we can do for our short call spread is preset our exit options. Now this is really fun. We did this in the last version of the update, so I won't go through and go through all the exit option stuff, but you can see we already have an input set for exit options. So I'll just use that same input for these exit options. We can modify those at any time. I'm gonna go ahead and set some tags here. So I wanna give this one a short call spread tag so that when it opens a position, I can reference it in my trades, in my position history, etc. cetera. Um, you could do some other things like you could do overbought. That's a really, really popular one. Um, so you could also do RSI and CCI or all the other technicals. Like basically what are the conditions that that this position was opened in. This way I know, I like to set these personally with things like overbought or CCI or overbought technicals, because then I know if I'm looking at the position, I can see the tags on that position that got opened and I know, oh, that, that particular position was open because there were overbought technicals, right? And then you can add more tags to them as you go. Okay, so this is a really fun part now is that now inside of an open position action, we can instead of those other decisions that we deleted, like does the bot have capital? Is the position available? A lot of those are automatic now and we can start to go through some additional criteria, like make sure the bot has enough available capital before entering a position. That's an easy one. If we wanna only trade one position in any symbol that we're trading, we can say, hey, the bot has less than one position open with this symbol. So the only way it would open a position if it doesn't already have an existing position open. And you can do some stuff like IV rank or VIX ranking if you want to. We'll just leave it at these two for now that I didn't think that those capture most of what we want. And then we can go into position criteria. Now this is where you can get really cool and really complicated. So 
the key here with position criteria is, of course, use it to filter for things that are important to you. But just remember, the more filters you have and the more strict you are, the higher the chances. You're just going to filter everything out in the entire universe. So find that sweet spot for you. Um, do the things that are important to you. For me personally, I'd love to use the bid ask spread filter here. This ensures that the bid ask spread, when I'm going to look at a position or trying to find a position, ensures that that bid ask spread is tight or tight ish before entering positions. Now, I like to put in something like 15, 20 cents. We'll just use 20 cents for here. That means that if the spread is way too wide for a potential position, it gets filtered out. And we don't want to trade that position until the spread comes back in. And that can happen midday, can happen randomly throughout the trading week. But Monday, the spreads could be wide. Tuesday, the spreads are narrow, and then you get a trade. So that's fine. The other thing I like to do now is I like to use the EV per contract. Now, this is great because I can filter out trades that do not have a positive expected value. So this is super cool. It's a brand new thing that we added. I personally love it. It's never been used before in trading platforms. People talk about it all the time, but now you can actually filter trades and calculate trades on the fly to make sure that the expected value, how much you make and the percentage and probability of making that money versus how much you lose and the percentage and probability of losing that money is above zero. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna guarantee a winner on a trade. It just means that you're entering trades where the odds are probably stacked a little bit more in your favor. And I personally like that. Next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the probability of profit greater than 70%. You could also do a risk reward ratio here. You could do something like greater than 60% or greater than 70%. Again, the higher that you go here, the more strict and more filtering is going to occur before it enters the trade idea. It might filter out tons of opportunities. If you go something like this and you say, I want the expected value per contract to be greater than $500 and the max loss per contract to be less than $500, you are never gonna find a position. So probably never find a position unless it's really, really super wide position um, and that is gonna be filtered out by this max loss. So again, just remember, anytime that you're using these, keep in mind you know, that you have to filter out some stuff and make it kind of logical as you go. So I would do something like this um, where you have EV contract greater than zero. This is what I like to do. Sometimes in some of my bots, I like to use the max loss per contract and that controls how wide the spreads are. So in that case, you could do something like, you know, I don't want to risk more than $500 per contract. So that means that it'll find spreads that are $5 or less, essentially. That will inhibit the number of different opportunities it can look for. But again, it's up to you how you want to do it. Just keep an eye on your ticker symbols. So that's all the position criteria I'll add in here. We'll test this out here together and then you can see how it kind of works. And then once you find a bunch of ideas, I wanna rank them by alpha. Now you can rank them by different metrics. So you could do expected value, the highest probability of profit, the highest probability max profit, risk to reward. Alpha is a good one because alpha takes the expected value divided by the max loss. So it's kind of like a normalizing metric that basically gives you your um, expected outcome per unit of risk, if you wanna think about it like that way. And so I like to rank personally by alpha, so that's what I use inside of my bots. So once you have that open trade ideas, then you can go ahead and save this. And now if there's a bearish opportunity, it's gonna open a trade idea or start the process of opening a trade idea. Remember in here, it's gonna go through a bunch of criteria filters for the position and for the bot itself. So even though the action is to open a trade idea, there's multiple kind of sub actions or filters or criteria that are kind of wrapped up in here. And the cool thing about this now is that instead of having to build out all these different opportunity filters, you just simply check a box and basically put together your laundry list of things that you wanna do and requirements that you have. And these are all your requirements and once you're good to go, you simply hit save, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build out the same thing for the bullish trading opportunities. So I'm gonna go ahead and build out a bullish short put spread. I'll do this one a little bit faster because we have the opportunity here to go through these. So we'll go 20 to 45 days. I'll leave the short put and long put contracts there. I'll reduce the pricing down to about four cents of slippage. I'll use my same exit option input, which is universal. So we'll go oversold here. And we'll go ahead and do, oh, what I was gonna do here is a short put spread. And we'll go oversold. Just some add some tags. 
Bot criteria, bot has enough capital, less than one position with each symbol. For position criteria, we'll do the same thing here. Now again, you can make it a little bit different. So if your put spreads are a little bit different, you could do those there. Uh, EV per contract, we'll do risk to reward greater than 60, probability of profit greater than 70, max loss no less than, or max loss less than 500. Again, rank by alpha and we're done. Last thing that we have to add now is we have to add one down the no path. This is if we don't have a bullish opportunity, so think about it this way, if we don't have a bullish opportunity, then it's going to check, or don't have a bearish opportunity, is there a bullish opportunity? And if we don't have a bullish opportunity, this is our neutral path that we want to head down. So we want to enter an open trade idea, which is a neutral iron condor. And again, we can fill out very similar criteria here. Let me get that expiration in here. Go change this to 45 days. Again, we can specify any of these or we can keep them pretty, uh, pretty stable with the open ability to trade any contracts as long as they meet their criteria. We'll use our same exit options. And then here we'll do neutral, neutral technicals, and we'll do an iron condor as a tag for this one. Inside of our entry criteria, same thing as the other ones. Bot has less than a certain number of positions with that symbol. Bit out spread, we might give it a little bit more room to run here with the iron condor. There's more legs in there. The spread might be a little bit wider. We're still willing to fill the trade here. EV per contract still above zero. First to reward above 60, probability profit above 70, and then rank by alpha. Oop, and I forgot to add one thing down here, which is the max loss is less than 500. So we basically have now our new version of our Honey Badger scanner built out here. Now it's a lot simpler and a lot less decisions, a lot less to manage and think about when you are using all of these criteria right inside of the action. If we want to go in and edit any of the criteria, just open the actual action here, go down to that criteria, make all your changes you want, and then save and you're done. Now because we've reduced the, re the complexity of this, now we can go here and start to reduce and remove all of these extra inputs that we don't need anymore. We don't need these return filters or this probability of profit filters. These are these pops that we had in here before. Now it makes the actual logistics and the inputs of the Honey Badger basically get cut a little bit more than half. I think it was 13 inputs and so now we're down to six inputs, which makes it a lot easier to manage and a lot easier to massage these things as you go. So the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna run a test. We can run a test again with these inputs. Again, if you hit this checkbox here, which is added by default, then it doesn't actually send the orders. It just simulates, hey, would it have entered a trade? Would it have not entered a trade? And what I like to do is I like to test these out on lots of different ticker symbols just to see if my criteria are too strict, if my criteria is you know flexible. Again, you can run these paper trading if you want to. So we'll just test it on SPY, which is the ticker we're using for this one. Go ahead and start the test. You can see that in SPY right now, and we just did this this morning, uh, market's not open, so it's just using yesterday's data, but is there a bullish trading opportunity? No, because RSI is, it's high, it's 68, but it's it's not too, too high. Is there, or sorry, bearish trading opportunity? Is there a bullish trading opportunity? No, RSI is high, it's not over overbought yet, but it's definitely above 25, so it's not super low. So it was gonna enter a iron condor position. And this is what it basically selected. Now look, you can see here that the spread width on this on the put side is $3 wide, and the spread width on the call side is $3 wide as well. That means it's adhering to the rules that we gave it, which was that it had to do something with less than $500 of risk. So of all the combinations that you could possibly come up with for SPY, inside our date range, meeting our bid ask spread requirements, meeting our probability of profit requirements, meeting our expected value requirements, meeting our max loss requirements and max risk for a contract, that is the position that it ultimately came up with. And that's great because that tells me that it found that trade of all the combinations you could do in SPY that are iron condors, inside of all that criteria, this was the best alpha ranked trade. So this one had the best 
basically expected value per unit of risk, essentially, uh, which was really cool. And so again, you can click over here and you can see how it filtered out most of the opportunities to kind of come up with this one. So in this case, you can see there were 654 possible combinations inside of that range that we had given it. So all the combinations of different you know, things that you could do on SPY. 334 of them were filtered out by our DTE range. So basically half were cut off and filtered out that were either too short in expiration or too long for our target range. 104 were filtered out by probability of profit. 97 were filtered out by risk reward. So 104 of whatever was left over essentially, or of the 654, 104 of them didn't meet our probability of profit. So had a probability of profit less than 70%, I think is what we put on these iron condors. Then you had 97 filtered out by risk to reward, which means that maybe it had a good probability profit, but the risk to reward, like how much money you were collecting for how much risk you were taking was too low. And then you had 118 that were filtered out by expected value. So when the math actually worked out for all the expected values against all the slopes of the iron condor, 118 were filtered out by EV. So it's super cool because here's the deal, like, and this is, this is a straight up reality of this. There's no possible way that I can go through and monitor all of these and make all these calculations and decisions. Like I'd have to look at every possible combination of different strikes inside of that range and do all the math and calculate. There's no possible way I could do it. And previously with the honey badger, we did have to tell the honey badger what type of trade we wanted. It was cool that it could, you know, determine what market direction using some technicals, but we still had to do that extra part of like telling it what to do, like what type of trade we wanted specifically. And in this case, we gave it some parameters, we gave it a ticker symbol, we gave it a range, we gave it all of our criteria. And we said, look, the best trade that fits this, you know, subset of criteria ranked by this factor, that's the one we want. And that's, that's super cool that we can do this now. All right, so now that we've tested a couple of those, and I would go through and test more of those and change variables if you want to. And I won't do that on this video, but I do a lot of testing just back and forth lots of tickers, lots of variables. And if you need to run at paper trading for a week or so, see what actually gets positions filled that are good for you. There's definitely a sweet spot of too many variables, too much filtering that's gonna filter out the universe of everything, but not enough and you're gonna trade junk. So definitely wanna use those to your advantage. But once you're good to go here, now that you have this Honey Badger, which is new, Again, you can save this into your library. So in my case, I would save this into Kirk Scanners or if you have a new folder for it, but this is the new one that I have. And I'll go ahead and save this automation. Now inside of here, I knew, now have my new automation inputs. So SPY is my ticker right now and my high RSI level, my high CCI level, low RSI, et cetera, and my exit options. Again, I can modify those if I want to, but I'll keep those same ones that we've been using before. Those have generally worked for me. And then I'm gonna set the schedule as a scanner. This will go ahead and run this continuously looking for a new opportunity anytime I don't have a position. Once I have a position, the scanner goes into sleep mode and then essentially starts waiting for that position to be managed. Once the position's managed, it revives itself, kind of like wakes back up from sleep mode and starts looking for a new one. The last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna connect this input field to our mat, our, our mat, our master bot ticker input. So that way we can change the input one time and it flows through to any automations that we have. That's the only master input that we have, which is the ticker. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So the new Honey Badger scanner is up now. You can see it's only got six inputs versus 13 with the old one. If we just open up the new one, again, it's very simple inside of here. The older one had a lot more decisions because we were doing these extra opportunity filters. That's mainly the thing that we stripped out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete completely that old Honey Badger scanner. That way this bot is just running with the new Honey Badger scanner. Remember, anytime that you create a new bot, all these automations are turned off by default. So you can make all these changes. If you're making a change to your bot right now and just swapping it for the new Honey Badger scanner, you can do that as well. We just always suggest go ahead, turn off those automations so it doesn't start running midday and um, and let the bot you know make all those changes and then you can come back around. Okay, as far as monitors go, our updating exit options closer to expiration is a good one. We still wanna do this one. This is a very simple automation. There's no real changes to that one. Same thing with the challenged position exit. So this is a just purely a choice one that you can have inside of your Honey Badger. 
where if the challenged switch is turned on, then what it'll do is it'll start to exit positions if the position gets challenged um, and if the position is, you could even add if it's close to expiration or something like that. So in this case, this one is still good. We're still gonna go ahead and use this one inside of our bots. Again, if you wanted to, you could go in here and you could just turn this switch on. If you turn the switch on, it'll start to close the position when it's inside this number of days to expiration. Uh, so if you don't wanna use this one, you can just simply delete it from your bot version or your template, or you can just turn off this switch and that'll stop it from closing any challenged positions. So I'll leave mine on for now and that's how it works. So that's basically it. That's how the Honey Badger um, is now updated. So a lot of new stuff that we can do inside of that open position action. But really the key now is that we're not telling the bot the exact deltas we want. We're giving it a range to determine based on math and probabilities and stats what we want it to trade. And then we're telling it to rank for that opportunity. And we're telling it which opportunity we want based on the ranking and the criteria that we put in there. So that's essentially just using math and technology and databases to basically find that combination of trades that works good for you. So it's a really cool one. We'll go ahead and update the template, share it into the community by the time you watch this video. Again, if you have any questions uh, or have any comments about it, please let us know. Hope you enjoyed this update to the Honey Badger. I'll continue doing these um, and updating different templates and things I'm doing in trading um, just to kind of show my journey in bot trading and help you all out as we go. But if you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, happy trading.